This is the captain. We'd like to welcome you on board. Regal Princess is one of the largest luxury cruise ships in the world. Basically, we have everything a small town has and, uh, and a population to go with it. A crew of 1,400 live and work on board for up to nine months at a time. This is the time when you hope that you haven't, like, come without your boxer shorts or something. From new recruits... My agent rung me and he was like, You've got Regal Princess, their newest ship. And I was like, no. To senior officers. Oh, 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 oh. Dusty, if I don't like something, I will tell them straight in the face. This is the story of life at sea. Get up, you're going to have so much fun. Tonight, new dancer Dulcie makes her debut. I was so nervous. I was like, oh, hope everyone likes me. On the front desk, Timothy's got big ambitions. I don't know how to say it nicely, but <laughs> I'm getting... I want to change. And there's stiff competition to be crowned most travelled passenger. These people have so many cruises. The only way we will ever catch up is, is if they die and we don't. It's all aboard as Regal Princess departs from Copenhagen for a once-in-a-lifetime trip. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is the captain. My name is Edward Perrin, and on behalf of the entire ship's company, we'd like to welcome you on board. Over 11 days, 3,500 passengers will sail the Baltic Sea from Denmark to Russia. Out we go into the Great Blue Yonder. The ship is full to capacity. Almost a hundred of the passengers on this trip are known as elites, a title earned for their days at sea. I'm just going to check that they've managed to clear the other people out and that it's, yeah, that the sign's ready and that they're starting to get everything ready. Tonight, Captain Circle host Dawn is throwing an exclusive soiree for elite passengers who have cruised at least 15 times. Everything tonight is handmade. There's a lot of time spent. You know my favourite thing? Which one? Please. Oh, it's like a little evaporated milk white chocolate little tasty goodness <laughs> bite. <laughs> That's my favourite thing. Tonight's guests aren't just coming for cocktails and canapes. They're vying for a trophy, the coveted Most Travelled Passenger Award. We have people that pretty much live on the ship. I mean, they don't actually live on the ship. They do have homes elsewhere. There are people that will spend three, four, five months at a time on board the same ship. Some of them in total, you know, seven or eight years of their life has been spent on board a princess ship. Well, it's five o'clock somewhere, right? Yeah, right. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Frequent floaters Rusty and Martha are amongst the select few to receive an invite. I have been cruising since I was about four years old, and it's in my blood. When they sound the horn, it's like my adrenaline. So I've loved it. Rusty and Martha met online after losing their spouses. Last year, they took 11 cruises together. But compared to some, that's small fry. It's not something you compete or, or go for because these people have so many cruises. The only way we will ever catch up is, is if they die and we don't. Longer than the Eiffel Tower and 19 decks high, Regal Princess is bigger than many small towns. It can be bewildering for new passengers. So their first port of call is the hotel front desk. Thank you for calling passenger services, Timothy speaking. We'll have general inquiries where, where their rooms are, whatnot. Whoop. Mostly where the food is at. <laughs> they love to eat. It went through. Yay. <laughs> we don't have to make you do dishes. Ah, I would have liked to. Or you could clean my cabin if you want. Two years ago, Timothy left Canada for a life at sea. He's been helping hungry passengers ever since. Every question known to mankind comes through here. We bought a couple of reindeer skins, and they don't fit into our bag. OK. Our bag. It makes your shift go by really quickly. 
One of the largest ships in the world, Regal boasts almost 1,800 cabins, 16 restaurants, and even an 800-seat theatre. Dulcie, you're going to do the pre-show. You start on this side, right? Yeah. Yep. 22-year-old Dulcie from Portsmouth is the newbie in the troupe. So this job's my first job out of college. I went to Princess's audition in London, and then my agent rung me and he was like, you've got Regal Princess, their newest ship. And I was like, no. Dulcie is the least experienced dancer on board. She has to master the choreography of five different shows, but she's struggling with the complicated musical Fiera. It's just a bit worrying where obviously like these shows are new to us. We're all still a bit like, oh, what counts that on? What number am I on for that? Everyone's a bit like, oh. To keep her place, Dulcie needs to impress her bosses, dance captain Eleanor and deputy Matt. I take note of everything that they do. I need to be able to rely on team members to just go out there and do their thing and put on a good show. I'm always watching. Whilst Dulcie is under the spotlight, life for the passengers is a much more relaxed affair. Crew at the poolside bar are doing their bit to get everyone in the party mood. And juggling bottles of booze has got the attention of Northern Irish pals Brian and Philip, two recent converts to cruising. We thought that cruising was for the newlywed, overfed and nearly dead. <laughs> but uh, five-star accommodation and every morning you're waking up in a different country and uh, it's just a great way to holiday. Been looking forward to the cocktail show since we came on. One of our friends has seen the guy in action and he said he's absolutely fantastic. Hand eye coordination was fantastic. It's great. At Dawn's exclusive cocktail party, the ship's most loyal guests are eyeing up the competition. You have got the best of the best in here today. The elite of the elite. Californians Rusty and Martha are amongst 20 couples in the running for the most travelled passenger award. OK, we'd like to meet Captain Perrin. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Captain. How are you this evening? young one. Oh, if only. Thank you. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Dawn will reveal the winner during the cruise, and there's some competition. I think actually we've done about 23 cruises in total. This is our second this year and we've got two more planned. <laughs> well, I don't think we will be the most travelled, no, but we will be amongst them, yes. We're already booked for December. We haven't got long to wait, have we? Whilst the ship is in port, there's time to paint and polish and pick up new crew. Below deck, ex-Navy engineer Scott has arrived to join the hotel engineering team. This is my, my new home for the next two, two, three months. It's not too shabby. Beef jerky, another one of my uh, survival packs. But yeah, this is the time when you kind of hope that you've packed everything. <laughs> you haven't, like, come without your boxer shorts or something, something crucial. Regal Princess is the biggest ship that Scott has ever been on. Hotel engineer Marco will be showing him the ropes, and Scott is under pressure to learn fast. The ships are huge, and the amount of little issues that they come, sometimes they can be a little in intimidating. Just below here, there are awesome. kilometers and kilometers of piping. Marco will soon be leaving for his holidays, so Scott will be responsible for anything that goes wrong in this floating hotel. I always get a, a little anxious when I'm, when I'm taking over on a new ship, because, you know, any, anything can happen. On Regal Princess, the crew are gearing up for this evening's entertainment whilst the passengers relax. In the theatre, 
new recruit Dulcie is rehearsing the toughest show, Fiera. When I first went over to rehearsals, I was so nervous. I was like, oh, I hope everyone likes me. You have to try and prove you deserve to be in the team as well. Dancers are expected to maintain a West End standard. Theatre bosses Eleanor and Matt need to be sure that Dulcie is perfectly in step. I think Dulcie just didn't do a head at the when she did that last flick. I think all the girls did a head and then Dulcie didn't whip her head around. Hopefully you want to do a good job and you want to get that good appraisal at the end so you get offered another contract because it's not guaranteed. The pressure is on. For Dulcie, there's a lot riding on tonight's performance. To travel the world and dance on these amazing ships, like, it's always been my dream. For me to be the new girl, it's kind of a bit, like, daunting. Ex-Navy engineer Scott hasn't wasted any time finding the areas of the ship that most need his attention. Just get the sun cream and towels. We've got to test the sunbeds, make sure they're uh, fully operational. And we can test the pools, the jacuzzis. Yep. The spa. The spa, the saunas, you know. It's the worst part of the job. Somebody's got to do it, though. <laughs> but away from the sunshine on the upper decks, there's a less glamorous reality. Even though the ship is just a year old, the footfall from thousands of passengers is taking its toll. You've got to maintain the illusion that the ship's in perfect working order all the time. You've got to prioritise for when the passengers are ashore, because you don't want you don't want to stay. They don't want to hear this. They don't want to, you know it kicks up dust and a lot of um, a lot of dirt and muck. Scott and Marco have to patrol the entire ship every day, and they discovered a more pressing problem: a leak. Oh, I'm getting peed on. I won't have to listen. Bring it back. But with hundreds of miles of pipes hidden away, finding the source won't be easy. The longer it takes, the more damage it could do. For Timothy, after two years on the front desk, work is a little less challenging than it once was. I don't think everyone can glue it as, the, as I do, you know. <laughs> it's quite difficult. I've been working on the front desk for a very long time. So now I'm getting, you know, like a little, I don't know how to say it nicely, but <laughs> I'm getting, I want to change. There is another job up for grabs in the shore excursion team where his friend Emma works. Did you have a good day today? Wonderful, thank you. Yeah. Timothy, over at Passenger Services. Yeah, he's my best friend on board. We're very close, but he's very loud. <laughs> he sounds like a seal. <laughs> we'll get him a ball. <laughs> if he gets the job, Timothy will have to work longer hours, taking passengers to shore and selling tours. I don't think Timothy realises how much work we do here in shore excursions, especially this itinerary. It's port after port after port, and we arrive very early in the morning for every single one. So, yeah, it's uh, very intense, very intense. Yeah, I know there's a position coming up in a couple of months, so I'm going to try and nab that spot. <laughs> because I really want to go over there. <laughs> over the years, cruise superfans Rusty and Martha have spent more than 400 days at sea. They've even started producing their own merchandise. We saw somebody once with a badge that said, Bob, passenger. I thought, ah, oh, that'd be nice. So. I went on the internet, I had a picture of a cruise badge, and I had the maid. And I have a feeling that friends who are also frequent floaters are going to be very jealous. I don't know just exactly how to describe it other than, than family. If you support a football team or soccer team, you want to have their, their jersey on or 
yeah, their logo. You want to have something to do with them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I pass. You pass. All right. Thank you. All right. Engineers Scott and Marco have spent hours searching the ship and have discovered the source of the leak is above the galley. Now they have to repair the pipe before it causes more damage. It's another glamorous job for the boys. It's one of the many exciting uh, parts of our job. Staring at Marco's ass. <laughs> Get this all connected up, suck it out, and then that should be the end of the dramas then. It's a good start for Scott, and he's sorted the problem in the passenger corridor too. Well done. They'll never find the body in there. <laughs> it's the last time the passenger complains. <laughs> but when Marco goes home, Scott will be left in charge of repairs on this huge ship. The size of the task ahead is beginning to sink in. You always get a little bit anxious, don't you, when you take over, I think. Yeah, is there the expectation? It's, it's, na it's natural. Just a little, you know, you, the, you feel the pressure just that little bit more. He's been on the ship a lot longer than me, so I can see the effort he's put in, and I don't want to let it slip. The ship is dropping anchor in Sweden for the passengers to get off and explore. But everyone seems to want to leave at the same time. And Emma from Shore Excursions is being run off her feet. Peter, we're minus one on Aqua 13 and we're stickering Aqua 14. Hi, how many in the group? Four. Four, OK. The queues are getting bigger, so Emma has called her friend Timothy to come up and help. Oh, she's real busy in there. Get ready, please. Can you come on up? Why is it so busy? As this is the job he's hoping to do for real, it's a golden opportunity to let his personality shine. What time is it? It's Abba time! <laughs> for him to just walk in and to be thrown into the deep end, really, with all these passengers everywhere, he, d he deals with it very well. Do you want to do a conga line? <laughs> it would be fun! With Timothy proving to be a hit with the passengers, his chances of a career change are looking good. I love doing this dispatch, that's why I came up. I'm just like, I need to be part of this. <laughs> Over in the theater, Dulcie's trying to fit in too. She's just moments away from her big performance. Ah, uh, running out of time like always. Dance captain Eleanor will be keeping tabs on Dulcie as she takes to the stage. I think everything should be fine, so we'll see. Fingers crossed. Everybody, cheers. Everybody, cheers. Ah! Houston, my head right round, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round. For newcomer Dulcie, it's time to prove herself as a professional dancer. So I'm all brand new, so it was kind of like they're probably taking a chance, putting a newbie on their biggest, best ship. I feel that I'm fitting in quite well. It would be amazing if I could work for them again. So fingers crossed. The show has gone down a storm with the audience, but has Dulcie done enough to impress her bosses? <laughs> Hi. How's that? Uh, it was in the vest. It just wasn't very neat for myself, for my dance and for myself, what I'm used to. But hopefully next show will be better. <laughs> In the lounge, hundreds of guests are gathering in anticipation of an announcement. Ladies, good evening. Welcome, how are you this evening? Tonight, dawn will reveal who will be crowned most travelled passenger. On a ship this size, with nearly 4,000 passengers, to be the most travelled, to have travelled more than any other passenger on board the ship, is a, is a huge achievement. Rusty and Martha are in with a shot of winning for the first time in their cruising career. So excited. <laughs> it's, it's 
this is the first, and it's very exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to the sounds of Ophia. For the ship's competitive cruisers, the results are in. Are you ready? In third place, with 340 days, Ligia Brambilla. In second place, with 441 days, we have Robert Damero. And our winners this cruise, with 451 days, we have Martha and Rusty Underwood. Thank you. Thank well you. done. Congratulations, sir. There we go. It was really fun, really fun. Everybody's been so nice. It's just the first time we've gotten it, and uh, it was fantastic. Rewarding returning customers with champagne and trophies seems to be good for business. Martha has already booked their next five cruises. It's very addictive, very. We feel like we've, we're at home. We are at home. <laughs> Next time, there's a rare chance to dock in Stockholm, but they could get stuck. If I make decisions and we can't do it, I would end up being nailed to the cross. There's trouble for Dulcie as injury strikes. He's not going to be able to dance the next show. It's a bit scary. And Timothy's ambition is put to the test on tour. Are these mandatory? My hair's going to get messed up. Oh. <laughs>